which I was my Indian parents' dream. Or their worst nightmare. So while I didn't become the doctor they always dreamed of, I did get a paper published, land a big four internship, and find a full-time job in Silicon Valley. So hopefully that means something. I went to a liberal arts school in Boston called Wellesley College, and you might know this as the women's college full of feminist hippies, Hillary Clinton's alma mater, or you might just not know it at all. Regardless, let's see what this quarter million dollar education got me. So I was pretty cocky going into college as a pre-med and neuroscience major. Welcome freshmen! As you can see in this diagram here, most of you won't even be pre-med by the time you're seniors. So that semester, I took two pre-med courses, Intro Bio and Intro Neuroscience. Bio was a lot of fun. Uh, we dissected hearts, learned about anatomy, and I finally got over the failure that was AP Bio the year before. But neuroscience was not as great, and it was peculiar to me that as a neuroscience major, I wasn't enjoying neuroscience that much. But of course, I just brushed that aside and kept going. This is also when I decided to take Hindi to justify my love for Bollywood movies. And I usually stroll into class late after 6.30 a.m. squash practice as the sweatiest, stinkiest, sleepiest version of myself. So this class was not the easy A that I expected. All right, now it's spring semester and pass-fail grading is over. I started cranking out a lot of my pre-med requirements by taking more bio and statistics. I also took this really interesting freshman writing seminar called Wealth and Poverty in America, where we read a lot of economic papers and wrote a lot of papers. This is also when I hopped on a big green bus and crossed town to Cambridge, Massachusetts to start my two-year stunt at the MIT Gravia Lab. This semester specifically, I learned how to thread these tiny little carbon fibers through glass tubing that will later be implanted into the brain. And it sounds really cool, and it was. It was also a bit of an emotional roller coaster because a lot of the time my electric electrodes would break before ever being implanted, so I would see hours and hours of work lost just like that. I have a pretty bad tendency of underestimating how difficult things will be. So the summer after freshman year, I decided not to do one, not two, but three different things. I was working full-time at my MIT lab, and in between I would bike back and forth to BU to take a physics class and in the evenings, I would be scooping ice cream at the local ice cream shop called Toscanini's to make some extra cash. Now it's sophomore year and I'm feeling pretty good about the future doctrine myself. I keep going along with all my pre-med classes by taking chemistry and cognition and looks like those went pretty well. I also decided to throw in this class called CS111 to the mix, which was an introductory Python class, and I took it as a prerequisite for a computational neuroscience class I would take later. And it's pretty surprising that I chose to take this class, especially since in high school, I very tearfully vowed that this is going to be the last CS class I ever take. <laughs> but here I was enjoying CS, partially because it was coming easily to me, at least for the time being, and it was a break from all that mundane memorizing I was doing in my other pre-med courses. And since taking this class, nothing has been the same. Spring semester rolls around and things are starting to get a little more fuzzy. I am now taking that notorious make it or break it pre-med class, organic chemistry. And it was bad. And on top of that, I was taking physics too, which I normally took my daily nap in. So you can imagine how much I was enjoying my pre-med classes at this point. At the same time, I was taking data structures. This is that next class for those who survived CS 111 and want to continue with their major or minor. We were learning things like data structures, basic algorithms, and object-oriented programming in Java. And for our final project, my partners and I made this really cute interactive Dr. Sue storybook to teach kids basic reading and spelling. But we didn't know how to use GitHub, so our repo was quite a mess. This is also the point in my college career where I finally had to declare my major. So I asked myself, why can't I be both a CS major and pre-med? Nothing could go wrong. Mom and Dad, there's a secret I've been keeping from you. Yes, Rita? I'm going to be a new CS major. <gasps> Okay, but make us proud. That summer, I hopped on a plane all the way to Chennai, India to fulfill my high school dream of volunteering at Indian medical camps. So every day, we travel to different villages, set up reading classes, and usually hang out with some really cute kiddos. As a junior, I still had pretty much all of my CS major left to complete. Uh, that fall semester, I was still on the pre-med and MCAT grind, and I decided it would be a good idea to take not one, 
but two chemistry classes and yeah, that was a fail. To continue my CS major, I also took this class called Scientific and Parallel Computing, which as the name suggests is about parallel computing and its applications in science. I also took this class called Combinatorics, which I actually enjoyed a lot. I liked drawing pictures and it finally explained all of those really pesky probability style questions I never understood on the SAT. This is also the point when I decided to apply for tech internships. And I'd only taken pretty much data structures and had very little knowledge about how the tech industry worked. Subconsciously, I was trying to find a justification to quit pre-med for real. I told myself that if I get a tech internship, I enjoy it and I'm somewhat good at it, then I don't have to be a doctor after all. So I ordered myself a copy of Cracking the Coding Interview, a whiteboard, and started applying like crazy. And since I had pretty much no experience at all, I received very few interview offers. And out of those offers, I failed pretty much all of them, including my Google and Facebook final rounds. So I pretty much lost all hope by January. But a few weeks after that, I received an email from Amazon asking to do a phone screen. And a few weeks later, I had that Amazon offer in my inbox. So I sold my MCAT books and became a FANG sellout. So with a newfound ego that I had lost last few semesters, I found myself in some more difficult CS classes like machine learning. And in this class, I thought I would be learning how to create the next AI to solve all the world's problems, but instead we just learned how to use scikit-learn. I also took CS 240 that semester, which is formerly known as machine organization or just systems. And looking at the site right now, it's giving me some really traumatic memories. We learned about things like circuits, gates, microarchitecture, how to allocate memory, and for our final project, we had to make an interpreter from scratch. And I was really bad at that class and did not enjoy it at all, so I put as little effort as possible to just pass. Looking back, I wish I tried harder, because some of the things we learned were actually pretty useful for my full-time job, like how to debug and how to use things like Emacs. That semester, I also returned to MIT to work at the Media Lab, and we did a really cool project that was showing how bees are able to spread disease in cities like New York and Tokyo. For my project, I learned how to use D3, got over some of my fears of JavaScript, and create some really cool wireframes. But unfortunately, that was the extent of my career as a designer. <laughs> In the summer, I headed all the way to Seattle to start my internship at Amazon on the search team. And while I was there, I hiked in the most beautiful greenery, gave a new face to my favorite coffee, Pike Place, ate a lot of free bananas, discovered my love for noodles, and broke my three years of vegetarianism. Return offer in hand, I headed into senior year. Life was set and not as a doctor. Oh yeah, so in total I was actually taking six credits this semester, which is the max allowed by Wellesley. So in the fall I took algorithms, which I probably should have took before even interviewing. I also took formal languages and automata, which is a course where you learn how to draw those pictures to explain how machines work. This class was even worse than Orgo, and my professor probably just pitied me into giving me a passing grade. I also took databases this semester, which is known at Wellesley as the one class that's actually useful in the real world. And for our final project, my partner and I made this cool site to help ESL students learn English. I was still terrified of JavaScript, so I did most of the back-end work for this project. And now it's senior spring. After a pretty lit spring break in Disney World, I had a job offer in hand for an up-and-coming biotech startup in SF. It was everything I wanted, working in tech, changing the face of medicine, all while being in sunny California. Now all I had to do was finish my major and graduate. This was the home stretch. The last CS class I had to take was CS251, which is called Theory of Programming Languages. So in this class, you learn about how to make a programming language, and we also are introduced to the idea of functional programming. And at the time, I hated this class because we had to use all these ancient programming languages like Racket. We couldn't use for loops and had to do a lot of recursion, which having gotten my job offer seemed like a waste of time. But actually, this was one of the most useful classes because it really helped me understand what good code is on a very practical level. I also took linear algebra, which finally demystified the term eigenvector, which was so confusing to me in machine learning. Yeah, I ended up graduating on time without any fancy awards or distinctions, just a plain old bachelor's degree. And for my software engineering job, that was honestly plenty. At the end of the day, in tech, your degree and your grades don't really matter beyond helping you get your foot through the door. And TBH, you don't even need a degree in CS to get a job in tech. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something unlike me in college. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe. And if you want to see more videos about college or majoring in CS or the tech industry, just let me know in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next one.